What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome to another episode of Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bradley. watching our channel or if it's your second third fourth fifth sixth time watching our channel and you still have not subscribed go ahead and click that subscribe button also make sure you click the little notification bell right next to the subscribe button and share this video with a friend all right let's get right into it so we actually got our first dear mr and mrs bradley dear mr and mrs bradley me and my partner have been together for over 10 years and our interaction has changed over the years to an extent where it has become very detrimental to our relationship. How do you guys deal with keeping things spicy or together over these past few years? You want me to go first? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> um, So one, I think you have to figure out why your interaction with your partner changed. I think finding the root cause of the problem is probably the biggest advice I could give you because there could be a myriad of reasons as to why the interaction changed. And once you figure out why it changed, you can figure out how to get back on track. And if you can't get back on track, um, I guess I'm trying to think of different reasons that maybe your interaction could change. It could just be that you guys are different. Like sometimes you're, you just grow, you change. Yeah. You're different people. I'm a totally different person than I was from when I met him 12 years ago at this point. Totally different person, like night and day. And so we had to learn to grow together and accept each other's growth, even though it's not the same as when we first met. So that could be a reason. There could be, I hate to say it, but infidelity. Um, and that could be a reason why your interaction is changing. So there's so many different reasons. So finding the root cause of the problem, which good communication will do that, um, being able to find the root cause of the problem will help you figure out the answer. I feel like this is a deep question. I have seen the um, old school adage, or old school saying is, um, if you guys are married for 10 years and you get a divorce, you've been broken up for five. Um, and that feels a little bit like this. I feel like if you are, if your interaction, I think interaction is coming up. Like me and her argue all the time about things like, I don't feel like you talk to me this way, or you are, you mean to me, or the way that you address me is improper. And that comes over time. And we, one of the things that we have felt like we needed to do was address that right there. Like, let them like, too many times I feel like a conversation is had and you don't have any basis or anything like that. I would always ask like, oh, well, why do you say it? Or where are you getting that from? She would have nothing to say. So I'm like, well, well I'm like, I didn't keep, I didn't keep a, a notebook <laughs> of the last time you did that. So I, could, I can't tell you exactly when, but I know this is how I feel. Right. So I feel like to let somebody know when they do it is, is big. Um, definitely has to address it. I feel like that's a big silent killer within all relationships. And we talk about that all the time. You know, the only one, number one thing is communication in a relationship. And I think that if you don't communicate that to your significant other, it's going to be a, a big thing that's going, going to grow. As far as keeping it spicy. Let me, I'm sorry, let me just interject right there because being able to talk to your partner, you also have to think that maybe they don't even know the interactions change. Maybe they don't even understand the way that they're speaking to you or that that things have fallen off that they used to do. Life gets so busy and so crazy sometimes and I feel like we always expect people to know what's going on in our own heads. So maybe something is going on at work or um, that they just haven't brought excuse, home. Though. No, it's not an excuse, but maybe there's something that's going on at work that I just haven't brought home, but I've been stressed out about it. But I've been trying to leave it at work, but it really hasn't been working. And maybe I don't even realize how stressed out about it I am and how it's coming off to other people. And so if I haven't talked to you about that, and then you haven't talked to me about how my interaction is changing, then I don't know. 
and we're just going around, I'm stressed out, not realizing it, snapping on you, and then you like, well, what am I doing, what's wrong? And so we're like, you know, we're, we're missing each other and, and missing the communication piece. So I think communication is a big deal, and you have to, it may not even be you. It may not be the relationship, it could be something totally unrelated. Or it could be you. It could be. Um, you guys just aren't on the same page. Um, and I think that happens. Unfortunately, I don't think that's something that people say enough. I think people do grow apart. I think people do not view each other the same way. It could be something that happened in your relationship that somebody was like, oh, it's not a big deal, when actually it was a big deal. Yeah. And they just become, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Um, uh, they look at you differently. They just view you differently, and, it, and you sometimes you want to get something back, but you just you you can't. You just can't get. You can't get it back. I think you also have to. I think people also have to realize the value of help too. So maybe we can't get it back on our own because I'm in my own head and I see this this way, and I'm not budging. You're in your own head. You see things your way. Sometimes you need an outside perspective to to really break down what's going on in your relationship which sounds weird that it's your relationship but sometimes you can't see it when you're in it yeah you need an outside perspective sometimes which is weird because you don't want like that's my big thing with therapy is i feel like i'm bringing somebody who knows nothing about me nothing about you into our situation that's a good thing though that no bias supposed to not have bias like if you can get an unbiased opinion on like everything i think things will be a lot better Do you, I, but everybody that you ask that you know is gonna have some sort of bias sure. but if you can get an unbiased opinion on things like I, I, if i can get an unbiased opinion on a lot of things not just relationship things but like maybe a life decision that i was gonna make or something like i could be like oh i want to take this job but it's in chicago or something and I talk to my parents and they're gonna be like, oh, Chicago's so far, I don't, you know, I don't want you to go. He's gonna be like, oh my. I'm gonna be like, let's go. I've been back and you for everything that you <laughs> I'm just <gonna> saying, <laughs> everybody has a bias. So maybe the job, the job's paying a lot of money and you're gonna be like, no, we need to take this, let's go. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Not thinking about, but if you can get an unbiased opinion, lay it all on the line and somebody is able to just give you their perspective, I think, that all, that helps to me. Therapy. I mean, a lot of people vouch about therapy. Um, we haven't had, we haven't utilized therapy. Which um, that was we, one of our goals for last year, and yeah. we never did it. And I, I, we need to once things settle down. I really want to go. I think therapy is healthy. I think it can be healthy. It's scary for me just to be like laying out all my all my thoughts. But Why? I, I just it just is. It's just. That, I, I, like I said, I've been open to it. I told you I'm, I'm open to it. Um, it just, it, to me, it's just kind of like this person, I'm, I don't like to be judged. I feel like therapy turns into like, the, your therapist is, is to an extent judging you. I don't like people judging. <laughs> so that's kind of where I am with, with therapy. But as far as this topic, uh, I just think, like I said, I think people can grow apart. I think people can get distant. I think people can come back. I think that you just have to talk about this stuff. Now, the spicy part. If you fall off in whatever aspect of the... the no, no, not even have to be sex. I think it's a, a chemistry. Like, if the chemistry is off and not... In your relationship, yeah, that's huge in all aspects of a relationship. It is, and most of the times you can feel when the chemistry is off. You can see it like we'll have even, and it has nothing to do with a spice, I guess. But even we'll have conversations, and he can say one word, and I'll be like, "What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you?" Because I feel it. I already know it. He can say one word. Sometimes I don't have to say nothing, and it's just. I don't know, just his interactions, and I'll be like, what is it? She just, no, she, because yeah. I'm a, like, you guys have seen in some of our videos before, I'm a touchy, I'm a touchy feely person. So if a day go by and I don't touch her or I don't kiss her or something, 
and I'm like answering like, yeah, that's cool. Then it's, what's wrong with you? Because I know. Because <laughs> something is up, and I know. And it's like, you can definitely feel what chemistry is off in a relationship, and it really, like, your chemistry is off, and then I'm like, well, what's wrong with you? And you're not telling me to know I got an attitude and my chemistry is off. And so it just kind of spirals. So I would advise if that happens, and as soon as you notice something is off, address it head on. Address it head on. I think that is a, a point. It's huge. You see a lot of that stuff about that and be like, no, nothing, nothing. I think nothing is a bad word when you when it acts like, What's wrong? Especially if you've been in a relationship for a while, like you, you guys know, it's like it's something wrong. Like to let that fester, because already now I'm at the point where I've gotten to the point in our relationship where when she asks, it's like, all right, let's talk about it. I won't bring it up until she's ready to talk about it. But once she's ready to talk about it, I'm like, I'll ruin, I'll, I look at it like this. I'll ruin the night per se to get what I need to get off my chest, as opposed to letting it fester. And then it's Monday, I got an attitude. Tuesday, I got an attitude. Wednesday, we talk about it. I got it now, obviously we got an attitude on Wednesday. Now Thursday, we're trying to figure it out. Now we done wasted 72 hours trying to figure out something that should have been addressed on Monday. I think that's the biggest thing too, is time wasting. Like the, the last thing you want to do is time is just so precious with everybody you have no idea when your last day hour minute is going to be on this earth you have no idea when your partner's last day hour and minute is going to be on this earth and I, I mean i hate to sound so grim but it's the truth so to waste two days on something that you could have had solved and i'm not everything can't be solved in a, two in a day yeah. like some people They'll say never go to bed angry, and I don't believe in that. She does not believe in that. I'm it. like, <laughs> I'm not just gonna sit there and argue with you all night. Like I'm not having that. I'm tired. Let's let's pick it up tomorrow. I'm not going to sit there and argue with you for hours and hours and hours and hours. Not gonna do it. And so sometimes I also feel like you need to cool off and look back on the situation. Again, I feel like you can't see what you're in. If you're in it right now, I can't see. I can, all I can see is is what I think I know. I can't see everything else and I haven't had time to sit back and think and look. And so letting some time pass is definitely helpful for some situations, but I mean, I'm not trying to let two, three, four days pass. I feel like you need to learn your partner. Like it's one of the things I've learned in our relationship is like, she's not gonna argue with me all night. And I'm a, and I am a- I'm gonna go right to sleep on I'm a, um, what's the word? I'm a habitual, Poster like I was I say things to provoke her at times like I know like if I say this I'm gonna get a reaction So now I've gotten to the point where I don't say things to get a reaction. I'm going to say how I feel And if you want to talk about it, we can if not I'm going to say this and I'm going to bed Once we get to that point in the, the, the conversation where I know it's like the conversation is about to die I'm like, all right. Well, this is how I feel. This is how you making me feel Boom, I'm going to bed We've we definitely learned how to argue better because um, we were terrible arguers for a long time, a very long time, probably just maybe over the last few years, we've really learned how to argue better and learned how to... Expound on that. How do you... I, people hear that and they say, like, how can you argue better? Well, no, not, not... First of all, not going below the belt. Like, you know hot buttons on your partner. Maybe sometimes you push them, but not going below the belt, I think is very important. Like, I would never say anything, I don't know, say like, say like maybe you got more money than your partner or something. I would never be like, you broke ass. Like, no, you probably don't get punched in your face. I'm just saying, you don't want to say anything like that. But um, just, uh, I think being, being respectful, just getting your point across. You don't have to raise your voice all the time. And sometimes things may get heated, but you don't have to raise your voice all the time. You definitely don't want to be disrespectful. You shouldn't be like calling each other names and stuff like that. Just stick to the what topic. the topic. Yeah. The topic. Been underlying the issues. I feel like at times 
there are things you're gonna get heated in an argument that's gonna lead to maybe like, okay, well you did this and this made me feel this way and you also did this a little while ago and that is why I felt that way too, but I didn't address it. And being able to convey, I feel like healthy arguing, arguments are gonna happen. Healthy arguments are when you're able to convey a message what you're trying to get across to somebody where the point where they understand and you know that, okay, tonight's gonna be a little tense. It's gonna be a little bit tense in the in the bedroom or in the house, but the message is gonna get across and we are gonna move, we're gonna move forward from it. And that's the biggest thing. That's what you wanna do. Like the, like me, I'm not a person where we argue or or we say what we have to say and I'm immediately good. I need some time. Like I'm just not immediately good, and we yeah, about to kiss and make up. I usually we have an argument, and I'm usually the one. It'll be three o'clock in the afternoon the next day, and I I'm the one. Usually I get a text early, like, "Hey, what's up, baby?" And I usually like three o'clock in the afternoon. I gotta send a text message, like, "What's going on? How you doing today?" <laughs> That's what I'm just. I need some time. I know we got over it last night, but I need some time to cool off, and that's just me. And I think also respecting. Those not saying that you have to take everything that somebody throws at you, but I think respecting some of those boundaries and just knowing, okay, this is how she is, and I hate saying that because I hate when people hate say this is just how they true. are. But, but you know the your person partner. you're with, you, you know what I'm saying? Your yeah. So, and if it's if it's not too detrimental, if it's not killing you too much, if your partner needs that space, give them a little space. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to bend a little bit. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I feel like that's just how I feel like that phrase. I hate that term too. Like that's just how I am. But there are certain things with your partner. You just know like that's how they are. They are like this. It's, it's not professional growth and it's not anything detrimental to your relationship. Like she said, if it's something like, oh, we had an argument last night. She gonna need tomorrow's. She gonna cause CC doesn't apologize. CC, I do. CC's form of apology is she she does something for me, or she she she'll be like she'll call me. We won't talk all day. She'll call me like hey, I'm cooking dinner. What you want? Or something like that. Like she doesn't say I'm sorry, but I know that's her form of saying I'm sorry. And you gotta you you, you know, I'm nothing wrong. <laughs> and you have to understand that type of stuff in your relationship. Not say, and if, but at the same time, I'll say this. If you're not comfortable with that, oh, yeah. you need to say that. Like, I know that she's not going to physically say I'm sorry about much. And I'm okay with that. Because I know that when the different things that she says is her form of saying I'm sorry. But if you need to hear that, you need to express that to your partner. Like, no, that's not, that doesn't work for me. I need you. And if one time, if there are times I physically tell her, no, you need to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't said that to you. I say sorry. You do not say sorry. I do. You do not say sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, final thoughts. I will say, uh, if you are in a relationship and things are getting different, have or have gotten different, then I feel like you need to identify that early enough within it that you don't let it get too far gone. Because if you get too far gone, I feel like there is a point where there's, you. I don't know, we've never gotten there, so I, I'm not an expert on that, but I do believe that I, I wasn't with people before I was with her and their <laughs> previous relationship was a long time ago. But when you get too far gone, there's no coming back. And so you have to identify and address it early enough on that you're able to save your relationship or your marriage. So I agree with everything that he just said. It's That's why we husband and wife. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, guys, I hope this video was helpful and entertaining for you. I hope you guys are really enjoying this series. Don't forget to give this video a like, thumbs up, and also let us know down below if there are any topics that you want us to cover. And if you guys got any dear Mr. and Mrs. Bradley you want us to address in future videos, you can shoot us a DM on Bradley Party of Six on Instagram. You can shoot us an email. Our email is always listed down below as well, all right? So until the next video, it's Mr. and Mrs. Bradley checking out. Peace.